<sighs> hey, darling. Wow. I guess I'll just start off by saying I made this YouTube account because for anyone that knows me knows that I'm traveling Australia and basically I wanted to document this whole thing. Now, I had absolutely no idea what that looked like and I didn't know how I wanted to document it. I kind of just figured it out while I was on the road. And I apologize for anyone that subscribed here and hasn't been getting what they thought they'd get out of it because to be completely honest with you guys, I had no idea what I was doing at that point. You know, I knew I wanted to share this journey with the world, but I didn't know what that looked like and it was a whole lot of trial and error if I'm being honest but one thing I did know was that I wanted to take you guys wholeheartedly on the journey with me. Now if this is the first time you're seeing me I am actually on YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. TikTok is like this is where my tribe is you know and I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say that most of you have come from TikTok. If that's you, I see you, baby. And thank you so much for being here. Like, thank you for being in this space with me right now because this one's a really hard one for me. And let me just preface this entire video, okay? So what I'm about to share with you guys is something so deeply personal to me. And I actually made it on week five of my trip, okay? We are week 29 right now. And when I had made that video, I was still in kind of limbo about the way that I wanted to let everybody in on this journey. And I kind of didn't even know where to start. I really didn't. And I'll be honest in saying as well that it took me a lot longer to let everybody in because of what I'm about to show you. Now I must say, I think in some way, shape or form, it also took me a lot longer to post because one side, released it into the world and not even on a public platform. Once I had spoken everything I wanted to say out into the universe, even if it was just in camera form, that was like a huge release for me. It was a massive release. And I think that's when the weight started lifting off my shoulders a little bit. And that's when I was able to actually start creating for everybody and start letting people in on the journey, even though they didn't know the journey wholeheartedly. And I guess the behind the scenes for me, I still was able to release, you know? In fact, I got to a point where I was like, it's, it's been that long now, like why even bother sharing it. I for some reason thought that I was oversharing and I for some reason thought that it's just my personal business. Why does anybody need to know that? But you guys are my tribe. You guys are my besties. Like I don't see you guys like numbers. I see you as actual people and I want to be able to be open and talk on my platform as if you are my besties and as if you do know my deepest darkest secrets and with the way that I create my content I want to be able to just have casual conversations about all of these things. You know what I mean? And how I worked through all of it because I know that I can help so many of you by just sharing all of that but there's no way that I could just start talking about it out of nowhere because everyone would be like what so anyways here it is my darlings I'll see you at the end of the video Hi. My name's Sophia Ligeros and when I tell you that I had to pull up in a random car park in the middle of Melbourne because I just had this thought and I thought to myself, I need to whip out my camera and I need to whip it out right now because if I don't do it now, I think I'll just keep putting it off and I'll never say what I want to say. And that is, honestly, about five weeks ago, I set off on one of the biggest trips of my entire life. I quit my job. I left everything that I ever knew. I bought a camper van and I'm now traveling Australia. And I just feel like, I feel like there's something and that's how I got to where I am and how I've become the person that I am today. And it's just so much deep rooted stuff that I feel like for some reason, something, someone, my higher self, God, the universe is telling me that I have to share this with everyone, explaining just how significant it is for me to be here, right here, right now, and to be doing what I'm doing. Because 
I never in a million years would have ever thought that this was even possible for me. And for some reason, ever since I've left, I just haven't felt inspired. I haven't felt motivated to share these moments with everyone because I don't think anyone would ever really understand how big of a deal this is for me and how significant my bravery is in even doing this. I'm honestly so nervous. I'm so nervous and I just feel like it needs to be said. So here goes nothing. My trauma starts back from when I was just five years old. I was assaulted at the age of five by, fuck, fuck, Sophia, you can do it. I didn't even think that this still triggered me, but it does. Okay. I'd kept it a secret for a very long time. And months later, me just being young, I told my family and I, I don't I don't want to get into details with this, but basically from a young age, I'd been extremely sheltered. I wasn't allowed to hang out with my friends anymore. I wasn't allowed to have sleepovers anymore. I wasn't allowed any play dates. And I was put through multiple counseling sessions. You understand the gist of that, right? So now I never really thought that that affected me. I honestly didn't. To this day, I still can openly talk about it to the people I'm really close with. And it doesn't, it never really, it doesn't affect me. And I think because I'm opening up here in a public platform about it, that's kind of getting me a little bit emotional. But from a young age, I always had it in my mind that you can't trust anyone. Even when you think you're safe, you're not actually safe. When I was younger, I, re I specifically remember just always having these thoughts of just feeling unsafe, even when I was safe. So my sister and I shared a room until I was 21, basically. And just sporadically at night, I would wake up and I would start freaking out. I would start panicking and I would think that someone's going to come in and kill us and kill my family. And I know that's super morbid. Bed, but that's genuinely how my brain thought. So even when I was in a safe environment from a young age, I just always felt unsafe because I was like, I can't trust anyone. I, I genuinely think I've carried that out from a young age into my adulthood and you'll understand why shortly. When I was 13 years old, I developed a form of anxiety called depersonalization and derealization. Um, if you don't know what that is, um, it's a form of anxiety where you feel like you're completely detached to the person that is there physically living. So the only way that I can explain this is imagine that you're dreaming and when you're dreaming you see yourself from the outside looking down and for about three years of my life, I felt this sense of detachment. Like well, the person that was in my mind wasn't actually the person controlling my body. And that was one of the scariest things I had ever been through in my life because I had no idea what I was going through. I was suffering panic attacks daily. I stopped hanging out with my friends as much. I isolated myself. I turned to drugs and alcohol because that made me feel normal. And the only way that I ever felt normal was when I was drinking alcohol because it put Put me in a state where I wasn't thinking about the fact that I was completely detached from my physical being here on earth. I isolated myself and I didn't seek help because I had no idea what I was going through and none of my friends knew what I was going through. I had these really weird tendencies where because I didn't feel like I was in my body, I would move my body in... I had no idea what it was. I didn't want to let anybody in because I, I didn't even understand it myself. So for me to even try to put that into words to someone, and especially my friends that were at the same age as me, it just wouldn't make sense. So I didn't do it and I isolated myself and I let it get so bad. Before I went to sleep every night, I prayed and I prayed to God that it would just go away and that I'd wake up the next day feeling normal. I'd wake up and it's the first thing I think about when I wake up. I would wake up and sit up in my bed and I'd go, is it gone? Is it gone? God, please help me. Please help me. Every single day I was praying. Anyone that's ever had anxiety or a really bad form of anxiety and suffers from panic attacks, you know that 
whatever your panic attack triggers are, you always avoid that, always. And I was having panic attacks on the daily. I was having them at school, I was having them in the mall, I was having them when I was hanging out with friends. So every single thing that triggered a panic attack, I stopped doing. So I totally isolated myself and I, I genuinely thought I was going crazy and I thought that I would never, ever, ever be normal again. So I ended up turning to the internet and I ended up self-healing on my own and figuring out ways to manage this from a very, very young age. I didn't ask for any help and I didn't want to let anybody in because again, I was just so young and I didn't know how to explain it to someone and I didn't want anybody to think I was crazy. So moving on from there, I ended up getting into a relationship and this relationship was your typical toxic, abusive, physically, emotionally abusive relationship, which I was in for about three years. So from the age of 15 to 18, it brought out the absolute worst in me. I have never experienced a burning love for someone so much in my life. 15, I mean, that's super young. Like you, you haven't even fully developed by then. Because I'd gone through so much already, mentally. I wasn't your average 15 year old so I had to take myself out of some really dark places and I had to mature a lot quicker. For reasons you can imagine I'm not going to get into detail. I don't want um, this to trigger anybody but um, I was physically abused. I was emotionally abused. I was I was threatened with somebody else's life over my head. We were getting visits from police all the time because the neighbors were always calling saying that there was domestic violence or there was just screaming and yelling. The amount of women police officers that sat down with me that were in tears when I was telling them what this man had done to me because they found out how old I was and they were like, we have daughters your age. You need to escape. You need to get out of this relationship. I kept going back. I kept going back. And that's because I was young and I was in love. He got involved with a bad crowd. And while him and I were staying at his house one time, um, the house got broken into by bad people. And I remember at the time, we both just ran. We both ran. We'd both run in separate directions and I'd run into the lounge room. These guys are knocking this door down. And mind you, I'm, I'm 16 at this time, right? And I was frantically looking around for an escape and I tried to open the windows and the windows were locked. And then I tried to smash the window and I couldn't get through. And then I remember losing him and I went to go run back and find him and in my tracks, there were these two guys and I'm face to face with these guys. I was so scared that I, no BS, started peeing. Where I was, like I, I've never been so scared in my life being face to face with these people and thinking that's it, I'm dead. Like they're gonna kill me, they're gonna do something. They ended up robbing him and they robbed me and they took all of the money that I'd worked so hard for just before Christmas. So this brought my old anxiety and my old scars back up. So I was having constant panic attacks. I developed PTSD from this. I was just having panic attacks nonstop. Every time I saw a car that was even Remotely close to his car, I would have a panic attack. Like it was, it was insane. I ended up leaving this guy and I ended up swearing, swearing on my life that I would, that I would stay single for at least a year or two after breaking up with him because it was such a traumatic relationship to go through. It was so extremely difficult to even get out of that relationship because if I ever told him I was leaving, then he would threaten me with his own life over my head. I got to a point when I was 18 where I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to accept the fact that someone is going to die. Someone is going to die by me making a choice to leave and I can't let that dictate the rest of my life. So I accepted that, I accepted it. They're not dead. Then ended up in a relationship um, not long after that. And that was that was actual butterflies and rainbows. So, so my first boyfriend and my second boyfriend, polar opposites. And I decided to just give it a shot. I was like, you know what? Why am I going to let a good opportunity down just because of my old scars? So, and that was going absolutely fine. I, I don't actually want to touch on this relationship too much. Um, I think I just want to talk about the main point of why I'm sharing what I'm sharing. Um, basically, in this relationship, this part 
partner started going down the wrong track as well. They started getting into the wrong scene as well. Um, and this brought up all the old anxiety that I had rid of from my last relationship plus my depersonalization and derealization and the feeling of constantly feeling unsafe. Me choosing to stay in this relationship brought all those old emotions back up. It brought them back up and tenfold. So I was constantly anxious, constantly looking over my shoulder, constantly feeling unsafe because I was now in an environment again where I knew that I was putting myself at risk and the person that I love was at risk. Lo and behold, everything that I'd been so concerned about, my safety, their safety, um, one night, woke up at 3 a.m. to the door being obliterated, absolutely obliterated, and thankfully this time it wasn't, it wasn't actually bad people. It was the police and the house got raided and it was a very long 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 raid it was like a it was like an 11 hour raid i honestly can't remember because i was so sleep deprived it was freezing we were made to sit out on chairs on the balcony we weren't eating we oh my gosh it was it was awful it was god awful so anyways i was 20 20 i was 20 at the time when i tell you that i wanted nothing to do with this fucking lifestyle i wanted nothing to do with it okay and i kept it completely separate to me and my life that was kind of just happening in the background so you can imagine 3 a.m the door is being smashed in what are you thinking if you're me what are you thinking you're like everything i've been so worried about is now coming true i'm gonna die i'm gonna die i'm gonna die right here right now when i saw it was police i was actually extremely relieved because it meant that I was safe and what ended up happening then was obviously they'd found what they'd found and they ended up taking him away and they ended up leaving the house in a state that was so horrific everything had been ripped up every single cushion on every single chair was gone and thrown across the room the door was torn to shreds and I was left there on my own absolutely delusional no sleep I hadn't eaten hadn't gone into work I hadn't been able to contact anybody they'd taken my phone and I remember just standing there looking around going what the fuck what the hell just happened something had blown up with the people that he was involved in I ended up getting followed from I don't know where it could have been my workplace but to where I was staying my friends thought I was going crazy when I'd called them and I said I think I'm being followed and they ended up checking cameras and finding out that it was someone that we all had concerns about and that again made me feel like my safety was was being jeopardized I don't know if anyone's picking up on a trend here but basically this is what I'm understanding about my brain right is that from a young age I'd always had concerns concerns about my safety and about someone wanting to come and harm me and it was a totally irrational fear well it should have been an irrational fear then many times in my life where this anxiety and this PTSD about my safety has been reinforced that I'm not actually safe in places where I should feel safe so that's what I understand about my brain we ended up separating I started derailing quite a lot and my life was just an absolute mess. I then had fallen into an eating disorder for the next three to four years. This, this, wow, 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 wow. I, I, I believe I'd fallen into the eating disorder because something happened towards the end of my last relationship where I just felt like, for some reason, I just felt like I wasn't good enough. I, I so desperately wanted to feel good about myself and I wanted that validation from the outside world that I developed um, bulimia. I didn't tell a single soul, not a effing soul and I chose to battle those demons alone because I was so ashamed and I was so embarrassed this this part of my life I reckon amongst all of them this was one of the hardest amongst all of the other mental health issues I I developed and I had no idea what the fuck was happening I was in absolute denial about it for the longest time and I kept telling myself I'll stop when I want to I'll stop when I want to it got so bad to the point where I was doing it two to three times a day. I was constantly sick. I was completely depleting my body. I always had brain fog. I could never think. I was getting chipmunk cheeks. It was disgusting and it was 
the longest journey. And I strongly believe that once you've ever suffered from any kind of mental illness, once you've unlocked that certain part of your brain, I feel like those demons will always come out in, in dark times. Now, this eating disorder consumed me. I lived it. I breathed it very much like the anxiety that I developed when I was younger. Um, it was the first thing I thought about when I woke up, the last thing I thought about when I went to sleep. And this had me miserable. And no one would have ever known because I was conquering so many goals in life. But this was just one thing that I could not get rid of. And I became my best friend, but also my worst enemy. There is nothing worse in this whole entire world than disappointing yourself time and time and time again. And then you start to create this terrible relationship with yourself where you're battling your true minds. You're saying, okay, today's the day. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. No, the fuck we're not. Through all the turmoil in my life or any mental illness, I've always said, Sophia, your mind has created this. Your mind can take it away. Your mind is so, so, so powerful. This was my deepest, darkest secret. I lived with one of my best friends for two years. She had absolutely no idea. I only just recently told her about this because I'm one of those people that once I go, when I'm going through something, I need to go through it. When I've recovered, then I'll openly talk about it, you know? It's such a scary thing. Having people look at you from the outside in going, oh my God, you're so amazing. You've got such an amazing life. You seem like you're so happy. You When you're not. You're actually miserable inside and you are constantly beating yourself up and you're constantly talking negative to yourself and you're constantly telling yourself you're disgusting, you're fat, you're fucking, don't you dare eat that. Now you need to throw that up. Like that is such an effed up mentality to be in. And it's one of the scariest things I've been in because I consider myself a very strong, like mentally a very strong person because of what, I've, what I'd overcome. But for me, I was like, if I can't remove this after everything I've been through, if I can't even remove this from my own brain, how is anybody that's even remotely weaker than me supposed to get rid of this? Like, it was, oh, it was, it was insane. I have so much to say about this, but I don't, I, I, I will really just share it with the people that want to know. So that's another thing. I apologize. I'm having to move the camera because it died. So It was a very long road, but I ended up conquering those demons and healing. <sighs> and as I'm sitting here talking about all of this, I'm trying to remember why I felt the need to share all of this. And I think it's because this is my truth and I need people to understand where I'm operating from. So many times, especially because I'm doing what I'm doing, so many times people have said to me, oh, you're so brave, I can't believe you're doing this, that's so insane. It's like, one of my biggest, my biggest demons is the fact that I feel unsafe no matter where I am. I will panic about my safety at the best of times. For me to decide to live the van life where I'm literally on the fucking road, sleeping on the side of the road sometimes, as a single female, traveler, I get this sense of imposter syndrome because when people say to me, you're brave, you're amazing, I can't believe you're doing this. I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this either. Do you understand how hard this is for me mentally? And this was also one of the big reasons as to why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm like, these demons need to be faced front on. And if I, if I constantly let these demons take over, I'm never going to experience life. This more importantly is like such a huge deal for me. And I just feel like I can't, I, I can't sit here and just take credit for just being brave because it's like like the anxiety that I experienced, the crippling anxiety that I experienced before I left on this trip was unreal, absolutely unreal. I'm, I'm still on this journey. So I, that's why I feel like I can't take credit yet for being brave because I feel like I'm doing what a brave person does, but I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm almost there. I can feel myself getting better, but this is something that I'm working through day in, day out while I'm on the road, you know? I don't want people to just look at me and go, oh my God, you're just so amazing. And just, and you're, what you're doing is amazing. And you're so inspiring. And you know, like it, I did my time. I did my time. I do want to inspire people, but I want everyone to know that for me, this journey has not been easy. I was a bald woman for three years and everyone was like, you are so powerful. You're so amazing. I was a boss lady, but a boss lady with an eating disorder that no one knew about. And I was still battling so many demons. You know, I just feel like I want to be open with everyone now. And for some reason, even when I'm talking now, I just feel like it's just a weight off the shoulders because... Uh, 
because it's been something I've wanted to be open about for a very long time and I just have never known how to articulate it or I've never known how to put it out into the world but you know what I've just got to not give a shit and I've just got to do it I've just got to do it because I feel like this will be helpful for some people also understand what this journey is about for me I feel like I'm sitting here going I'm trying to find myself and I'm trying to feel free this is what I'm trying to feel free from the barriers and the limitations that I put on my own mind due to what I've been through growing up you know so if you made it to the end of this video, I honestly really appreciate you sitting and listening through this. And now I feel like I can fully let everyone in on my actual journey. And me sharing what I'm sharing, you know, the good times, the traveling, like I don't want people to just sit there and go, oh my God, I wish I was her. I wish I was doing what she's doing because the journey to getting here was not beautiful. And this is really what I want out of this trip is to conquer so many of those fears and just, just unpack everything and become the fierce lady that I really want to embody. Honestly, on every single thing that I touched on in this video, there's so much I have to say about it, but I feel like this will do for today. So thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Thank you for being here on this journey with me. And I understand that everyone's on their own journey their own very very special journey but always remember no matter how special your journey actually is you're never alone welcome back okay i did it i did it i let you guys in and now you're here properly understand how amazing this is i guess this is just what i want you to understand okay is that whenever you hear me say like i love my body or i love my gut or every time you see me showing love to myself or every time you see me out there showing up brave just know that this came from a place of very deep deep healing and this came from a place of unlearning and this this is why I have such an incredible relationship with myself now. I fucking earned it. I earned it. I did the work. I went through the ringer. I fucking love myself. I love myself so much it makes me want to cry. And not in a vain way, like just, just found a love and like compassion for myself that I've never felt anywhere else. And this, this is why you see me talking into this goddamn mirror all the time because I'm talking to my best friend. I love you. <sighs> and I don't think that anybody should have to go through any of this stuff alone. And that might be a little bit contradictory because I chose to battle it all alone. But now I want to just create a space where I can be open with you guys and we can talk about real shit. You know, I'll be real with you guys right now. I want to be 100% real with you guys right now in saying that the extent that I want to be able to help everybody, that time is not exactly now. That kind of a thing will be later down the track. Right now, I still want to focus on sharing my journey, sharing my trip, creating and having like the best time of my life. And for me to be able to help you guys and give you guys some tools just randomly throughout the day. Because I, I you never know when somebody needs it, you know? But the level that I want to be able to help you guys is something that's going to happen later down the track. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that looks like. Although I'm sharing what I'm sharing, I also just want everyone to know that I gave myself one year. One year to be selfish and to live for no one but myself. But in doing that, I still want to have this community that I can help along the way and share a connection with. Does that make sense? And when it's time for us to have those chats, we 100% will. <sighs> Love you, bestie. <laughs> and I'll see you all soon.